Hey there fools, Big T here and I'm back with another video. I hope you like this format because this is kind of the way I'm going to be going forward when it comes to my tea time commentaries and this is one of them. So uh, hope you like it. Before we get started, make sure if you're a subscriber to hit the notification bell. I've heard time and time again, that is the best way to get my videos. So go ahead and hit the notification bell and make sure uh, you'll be able to get all my videos when I do them. Um, and that's another thing is that I'm going to be trying to really uh, drop kick this YouTube algorithm. So I'll be uploading videos almost every day just to stay in the algorithm. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, I have an idea for what types of videos I'm going to be doing on a regular basis because I'm doing this whole new format that will help, like I said, uh, me get more videos out quickly and uh, videos of substance. So uh, make sure you hit the notification bell, hit like obviously that helps and uh subscribe if you haven't already so let's get started it's tea time fools so i just want to talk about uh nintendo and their philosophy and sometimes their philosophies are outright in your face you know exactly what they're doing um because they talk about uh, game design and all that stuff uh but i'm specifically talking about uh, their kind of stubbornness. We all know that uh, Nintendo can be stubborn, but I think um, this stubbornness really works out for them. And it's not, it's something that a lot of people haven't really talked about. Um, I don't think, I think they may think about it, but it's not something they uh, articulate for the most part. So we all know that Nintendo's had uh, struggles in the past, uh, failures uh, stemming from Virtual Boy to even GameCube. And uh, obviously most recently, the Wii U and um, this is something I just thought about it's like they don't just walk away from their failures for the most part um, they kind of double down on them if you think about it uh, their first failure is the virtual boy they didn't really double down on that kind of I'll get back to that in a second let's move on to the GameCube most people don't think of the GameCube as a failure although it is a kind of somewhat commercial failure it was the, the Nintendo's lowest selling home console up until the Wii U. Uh, I think it was around 21 million or so, a little bit over 21 million consoles sold, which is pretty low uh, for Nintendo and for most uh, companies. So, uh, so you got the GameCube, and the saddest thing is that the GameCube was very elegantly designed. It was the first uh, console out of the big three uh, uh, to use the power PC architecture, which uh, in the 2000s worked out really well um, and uh, Microsoft and uh, subsequently Sony followed suit after that so Nintendo was kind of ahead of the curve on that and like I said the, the, the GameCube was really eloquently designed it had um, a very uh, easy setup for developers to um, be able to focus on their gameplay that was one of the philosophies that Nintendo put out there is that they wanted developers to be able to focus on creating new types of games, um, interesting games and gameplay, instead of having to worry about being too mired in the technical stuff and spending too much time trying to figure out the hardware. So it was very much a developer system um, to where Nintendo wanted it to be very easy to program for, and it was really easy to program for, and it was just a very um, uh, nicely spec, nice power uh, console. It was just under the Xbox, original Xbox, and certainly more powerful than the PS2, and uh, cheaper because it didn't include DVD playback. Obviously, the GameCube didn't do well in the market-wise. Certain games that came out on it did well. It had really good third-party support. Not the best, but it had really good third-party support, and uh, it just wasn't enough. And I, I've talked about before, I don't think Nintendo really knew how to market the GameCube because it had some really strange marketing. Um, I think maybe I'll do a video on that uh, just talking about the marketing on the GameCube. It was not dissimilar to the strange or misstepped marketing, I should say, uh, that the Wii U had occasionally. So they had this great system with all this good, you know, great specs, and it just didn't do well. Obviously, Microsoft stepping in hurt Nintendo's uh, uh, market share quite a bit because um, um, the Xbox original sold, I think, 24 million. And people tend to forget that. They act like, yeah, Nintendo was in third place, but they weren't that far back. Um, they were only, you know, less than 3 million consoles back. So, but I want to get to the fact that Nintendo said, all right, 
this this gaming industry is changing what do we do do we follow suit with the other guys that is um the hd era with the ps3 and the uh xbox 360 do we break the bank follow along with that and hope to you know um you know carve a market for ourselves and hope for hope hope that you know that'll be enough or do we take this technology that we don't think we got enough out of yet um we're moving on and we didn't sell that much and so there's a loss there so i think nintendo was like you know what let's go a different route um obviously the wii was that different route but the architecture of the wii was not too dissimilar from the architecture of the gamecube um, people often joke that the wii is basically two game cubes <laughs> duct taped together uh, with the uh, Wiimote uh, as a controller. And that's not that far off. It's obviously, you know, kind of funny, but I think Nintendo was like, you know, we didn't get enough out of this hardware. We didn't get enough sales, obviously, out of this hardware. And we feel like we have more to go with this. We're gonna not, you know, go to that, uh, what they call red ocean. We're gonna kind of go to the, this blue ocean here and try to carve our own path and they did that with the wii obviously and it was a huge success to nintendo's greatest success home console wise to date so they looked at that and like well this worked you know we um that was a, the gamecube was a quote-unquote failure as far as uh the market share and uh, being able to really break through um so they just decided we're gonna double down on the gamecube in some ways obviously they changed the interface and whatnot that also helped but the the there wasn't a lot of money spent basically in r d uh to create the gamecube uh, or excuse me the wii and so they were able to turn a failure in many ways into a success a huge success so that worked there and then obviously you get to the wii u um which was a console that didn't do um uh, well at all um here's my Wii U gamepad right here. It was, again, uh, fairly easy to develop for. Um, obviously, there was a little bit more complication with the second screen, uh, but, you know, Nintendo uh, had a really good idea there, um, and they were like, we like this idea. It's just not quite there, maybe. Um, so let's rework that idea. Let's not just throw that away. Let's do something that, uh, um, with that technology. And obviously, even the hardware itself, of the of the uh wii u here uh is not too much crazy above or below uh the nintendo switch um some people estimate it's about twice as powerful the switch is to the to the wii u so very similar to what you you were dealing with when it came to uh the gamecube um and then the wii so you had the gamecube that didn't do well and they were like, we're not gonna throw away all that work. And we believed in the GameCube and how it was built and designed and all that stuff. We're not gonna throw that away. We're gonna make, we're gonna double down in many ways and make the Wii. And uh, this was a huge success. And it seems like that's happening again. We like the Wii U. Uh, we had some marketing missteps. Um, obviously we had some software missteps because they didn't really, uh, for the most part, sell um, this second screen experience outside of, you know, off TV play, which is great. And, you know, uh, certain games using this touch screen for like, you know, management of your items and all that kind of stuff, which was also great. Um, they kind of wavered on that part of it, but they kept the uh, off TV play thing, uh, which is amazing. And they took it to the next level as to where you can, t unlike the Wii or the Wii U, you can take your Switch anywhere with you, and uh, that is a huge selling uh, factor. And so, where well, you have the Wii U to Switch, where it's almost about you know twice as powerful, um, uh, same, just like the GameCube to Wii situation. And I felt like they, again, they doubled down, they perfected their idea to some degree, and they had a huge success. They have a huge success in their hands. The Switch is doing astronomically well, and the software looks crazy for this year, and it looks great. And so let me go back, though, to the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy was obviously a system that, you know, again, 
flopped. It was their hardest flop to date for Nintendo. But they didn't just throw that away. They It took them longer than it did for GameCube uh, to Wii and uh, Wii U to Switch. But they came back around <laughs> to that old Virtual Boy thing uh, with the game, basically 3D gameplay with the Nintendo 3DS. And look what happened with the Nintendo 3DS. Again, another great success for them. So Nintendo doesn't just take their losses and move on. They do, in many ways, learn from them. They double down and they say, that idea wasn't a bad idea. It's just maybe the way we implemented that idea that you know didn't work for us as well. And you know, I think they're right. There's their ideas are really sound, but sometimes they don't put it together. The many things that go into making a success work, you know, with the marketing and the uh, you know the messaging and all that stuff. They're pretty savvy that way. Nintendo is, and uh, they don't like taking losses, and they find a way to turn those losses into gains every time it seems. So you think I'm onto something here? What do you think? <laughs> you think um, I'm just kind of uh, blowing in the wind here? Or do you think that this is really something they actually do? Um, Cause all their failures, they seem to have turned around um, to a success in some way, shape or form. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, do you think uh, this is actually a strategy by Nintendo, by Nintendo or do you think it's just worked out that way? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, make sure you hit that notification bell. Helps me out. Hit the like button. And I do have a membership now. You can go check out the benefits to that. Um, like I said, I'm trying to break through the algorithm and become, uh, you know, a bigger YouTuber here in these gaming streets. So that would definitely help me out, guys. Thanks again for watching and listening. And now, see you fools next time. Peace out.